we have a quorum and this is the appointed time. So let's give it a start. Many deputations have been invited to come here today. So first item on the agenda is confirmation of minutes. The minutes of meeting held on the 19th of May has been forwarded to members. The Secretary has not received any proposed amendments. So if there are no other views, uh, may I invite members to confirm the minutes of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tony Chair and Mr. Martin Yeo. Information papers issued since the last meeting. Three papers have been issued. Uh, there is one on um, the um, break, meal break arrangement for the ambulance grade of the fire services department, and it has been put on our uh, list of items for discussion. And also, we're waiting for a written reply um, in relation to um, the uh, working hours requirement of the proofreader grade. Now, Madam Chair, I have um, a question. In I'd like to seek the administration's view on the civil service pay adjustment. Now, because of what happened uh, to the finance committee, is still on their agenda. It has not been dealt with yet. Yet, and we understand that um, you know the um, the pay the pay rise can be uh, backdated, and I've already heard grievances from civil servants. And there are some who may not be eligible for the backdated pay rise, and um, there are also other kinds of staff, NCSC, and in certain sectors, um, there are also some benefits, education, or uh, well, other benefits and allowances, and they'll be gone. So, um, Madam Chair, you should send a letter to them. Uh, because, in fact, for individual grades or departments, some of the staff will not be eligible for the backdated pay, uh, pay rise. Well, Ms. Lau, the uh, deputations for item three uh, are coming in um, uh, about the issue you raised. Perhaps we can wait till AOB and then we can ask the Secretary to give you a reply, but I understand that this is not under his purview anyway. But in fact, we can't get any reply today anyway, so let's uh, write to either the Financial Secretary or whatever government official and ask about it, even if the civil service pay adjustment doesn't take effect now. Um, they say there is no problem, but in fact, for some individual grades and departmental staff, they cannot get any pay rise in retrospect. I think, yes, uh, we can do that. But anyway, since Secretary is here, we can invite him to take the question. Oh, you're very good, Madam Chair. Uh, you uh, asked him to reply. Of course, I'm all for it. No, the Secretary doesn't have to um, dodge the question. Uh, item 3 is consultation on extension of the service of civil servants. The administration launched a consultation on extension of the service of civil service uh, on the 3rd of April for four months till the 2nd of August 2014. Um, the panel also uh, heard the administration's presentation on the consultation uh, proposal on the 25th of April. And we agreed to having a public hearing. So far, 35 deputations and individuals have expressed that they would come to the meeting, and uh, four other deputations and individuals have forwarded their submissions to us. They are not attending this meeting. And good morning. Uh, on behalf of, of the panel on public service, I'd like to thank deputations and individuals for coming to this meeting to express their views. If necessary, you can put on your Earpiece and choose the cha relevant channel. Channel zero is floor. Zero one is Cantonese. Uh, Cantonese and uh, channel two is English and channel three is Putonghua. And would those in attendance note a uh, matters to n uh, a paper in front of you in relation to matters to note for. 
members of the public attending uh, meetings or uh, hearing hear the meetings in the um, public gallery. And this document is also attached to the letter sent to you by the Secretariat. And mem members of the public in the public gallery can also get this uh, paper from the security staff here. And I may invite deputations to speak now. Each will have a speaking time limit of three minutes. And uh, please be succinct. You don't need to read out the submissions to us. Just give us the gist. And I also remind everyone that for the submissions and the speeches you make today, you will not be protected by the um, provisions under the electrical PNP ordinance. And I ask when you speak, please do not um, resort to code mixing uh, so as to facilitate the simultaneous interpreter's work. And uh, may I now invite New People's Party uh, Central Committee Chairman Mr. Kamen Fong to speak. I think uh, Hong Kong is similar to uh, other developed uh, places. That is, we are facing the problem of aging population. The major consequence, of course, will be for, uh, shrinking labor force. And according to the government, when our pop or working population rise to 3.7 million, and the coming by 2013. Uh, the trend will be on a decline, and then it will drop to 3.51 million. That means in the coming two or three decades, there will be a problem. And the government should act now and consider how by then we can ensure stability of the civil service, because the stability of uh, the civil service will also affect stability and prosperity of our economy. So with a shrinking labor force, the New People's Party is of the view that we should um, extend the service of civil servants on an appropriate scale. For Japan and Singapore um, and other neighboring places, they also have a similar system. They also extend the retirement age of civil servants. And there are also uh, overseas examples. Our average life expectancy and our uh, health um, condition is uh, that we find it acceptable to appropriately extend the service of civil servants. However, at the same time, we must also give them flexibility instead of uh, taking an across the board approach. For clerical grades, for clerical grades, we think that. Uh, it's appropriate to extend the retirement age from 60 to 65. As for disciplined um, ser um, services, uh, because of high physical requirements, uh, it is not so appropriate. And in fact, every year they're subject to uh, fit fitness tests. And what we're trying to ensure is that after extension of the retirement age of civil servants, the overall quality of civil service should not be affected. Secondly, incumbent staff is not properly looked after. Um, for grassroots staff, I mean for uh, junior ranks of staff and for um, new recruits, that are those recruited after year 2000, they um, will not be able to get any benefit from the age of 60 to 65. And we must therefore consider ways to resolve the problem as the, there will be a high wastage rate by 2038 um, from 7,000 to 8,000. Next, Ms., uh, Mr. Chen, Kenneth, Kenneth Chen from Hong Kong Fire Services Control Staffs Union. Now, um, I mean, there are two main parts of my speech. Yes, please speak into the microphone. In the coming 10 years, in terms of necessity, there will be a uh, surge in uh, civil servants retiring with the aging population. There is a need to extend the retirement age of civil servants. However, in this consultation exercise, what the government is trying to resolve is not what happens in 10 years, but 20 or 30 years. From recruitment to retirement, we're talking about uh, work, working life of 30 years. It cannot 
address immediate problems. Also, for serving staff, at present, with longer life expectancy, by the time they retire, they will still be of good health. So we believe, and we think they should have the right to uh, continue to serve in their posts, and for disciplinary staff. It's not just about physical fitness. It's also about our professional knowledge. We have years of experience. So if we can retain experienced staff to remain in their posts upon retirement age, it is important for the purpose of knowledge transfer. And also for uh, disciplined forces, I think this is not considered in the consultation uh, exercise. In para 3.44, it said that for clerical grade staff, they can um, work till 65. What about uh, disciplined forces staff? Should, shouldn't they also um, retire at the age of 65 so that they get the same benefit? And also, now uh, there, I think there is a discrimination. For clerical grade, um, they can. I mean, for civilian staff, uh, they can um, work, um, or their retirement age can be pushed back, subject to the fitness fest, fitness test. What about discipline services staff? So uh, the interests are not looked after, and also there are civil servants who would like to work um, under the uh, civil servants provident fund, and uh, their requests are not looked after. So our union's stance is this. First of all, we should uh, resort to the practice in the 1980s. We should allow civil servants to choose when they should retire uh, at an early stage instead of um, immediately before their retirement so that they can plan fully for their life and their, their, their families. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Next, from Hong Kong, SAR Government Employees General Union, Mr. Kao Ming Chung. Thank you, Madam Chair. Now, in the government's consultation paper for new recruits, it's proposed that for clerical grade, the at a higher retirement age should be adopted than 65, and we agree. And also, the extent there will be an extension from 90 days to 120 days, and there should also be um, a streamlining of the applications so that more applications can be uh, approved uh, without obstacles. Uh, otherwise. Um, extending the period further will not m give any help. In a consultation paper and also in the government's briefing session, I can tell that the government has not heeded the request from civil servants. Of course, uh, the head of grades or head of departments can um, retain uh, staff subject to necessities. However, the actual reality is that for higher ranks, uh, they will be retained, but for junior ranks, in fact, they are most they they uh, they need uh, extension of their retirement. But uh, according to this policy, this is not the case, and many of them will have to continue to work after the age of sixty when they retire from the civil service. So uh, this should also be applicable to junior ranks uh, to tie in with the proposal in the population policy. Since there is a need, junior ranks should also be allowed to um, have their retirement age postponed. There should not be any discrimination, and th there should be equality. The administration should follow the practice of the new pension scheme in 1987 so that civil servants can, based on their physical conditions, decide when to retire. There should be a... Um, age limit, and the proposal should be streamlined uh, so that for new recruits under the CSPF, they can also choose to retire in 60, uh, the age of 65. And in the coming five years, uh, the number of civil servants retiring will reach 7,000, and this will affect civil service quality. 
a more active, a, pro, a proactive approach should be taken in recruiting new staff so as to improve service quality and alleviate labor shortage. In terms of approving applications, there should be an appeal mechanism so that we don't just um, uh, subject the approval applications to the will of uh, heads of grades or departments so that uh, there won't be any favoritism. Next, Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong, Deputy Spokesperson of Civil Services, Ms. Chang Fanan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when it comes to the retirement of civil servants, we have uh, been receiving service from these um, civil servants, so we have been in contact with them. In the past three years, 4,200, and there will be more and more people retiring um, in the coming years. So this will be a problem because more civil servants will be retiring. The service would see a succession problem in the future. So we agree that the government should extend the service of civil servants to a certain extent. This can help solve the problem of aging population and shrinking labor force. And the HOGs and HODs can take care of succession problems as well as operational issues. However, for the years of extension, it should be decided by the civil servant himself, and he should also be given the freedom to decide um, whether he wants to stay or not. I think we should start with the disciplined services because now the retirement age of um, disciplined services is 55 or 57. So this can be a trial point and then we can then extend to other departments in the civil service. So this should not be an across the board approach. There must be a fair and just uh, remuneration and benefits system. Civil servants would also compare the differences between um, new systems and old systems, and how about their provident funds, etc. So, all these are their concerns. This will also um, be factors when they consider whether they want to stay in a civil service after retirement. And also, for the uh, employment and review mechanisms, they should be fair and just and transparent. Some um, deputations mentioned just now, if this is not done, then um, there may be uh, problems of uh, shining. So we must pay attention to the morale of uh, the civil service. So these are short-term solutions. As for the long run, we need to maintain a stable civil service establishment and strength so that there is proper uh, promotion ladder. And also for civil servants, there should be thorough discussions among them because I think some of the civil servants still do not know what kind of choice they are given. Thank you, Ms. Chang. Next. Mr. Chang Siu Wing, Chairman of the Hong Kong Leisure Services Staff General Union. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning. I believe all of you know that lately there has been a study report on universal retirement protection. One third of Hong Kong's population in the future would uh, live under the poverty line. It uh, means that if you own three hundred thousand to four hundred thousand dollars, and each month if you can spend only two thousand to three thousand months, then you will be regarded as living under the poverty line. Unfortunately, many civil servants will be trapped under this poverty line. Why is that? It's because of their rank in the civil service. It's um, because of um, the years of service in the civil service. So many of them told me that they really want to extend their service. It's a matter of livelihood. Well, we understand that there is a succession problem in the civil service, and there's not enough um, manpower in a number of departments and grades, and this will also affect the life of Hong Kong people. I will not be talking about other discipline services. Today, I'll be talking about LCSD. After 
two, uh, year 2000, we have seen a lot more problems. For example, uh, swimming pools have been accumulated and the trees have uh, collapsed, uh, affecting traffic, etc. So um, can we allow this kind of things to continue to happen? Isn't there a succession problem in the civil service? Shouldn't we maintain our technical staff? Well, there are a lot of problems in our department. People may think that we already have enough manpower. However, if you look at the life-saving service at swimming pools, well, I don't know whether you will go to swimming pools, but for lifeguards, now some of them, some of the posts are taken up by security guards or even cleaners, and some of them don't even know how to swim. And what do the government spokesman say? It says that for this post, actually, you don't really have to save people uh, from the water. And Hong Kong is of good law and order, and there are not many robbers. So maybe we do not need so many police officers. We can just use security guards. So these are talents, uh, but they will be retiring. They will be leaving the civil service. So the government should really take this into consideration. And for extension of the service of civil servants, uh, we want to provide stable service to the community. We want to retain talents for the government. So maybe outside the establishment, positions can be set up and um, retired civil servants can have a choice. Uh, as to whether they want to keep on working or not. And also the government should review the manpower in the government. And also we think the retirement regime now is uh, very obsolete. We think that should be a thorough review. Thank you. Next, Mr. Peter So Liberal Party. Liberal Party. Now, lately we've heard a lot about the uh, demographic uh, situation in Hong Kong, and young people do not like to have kids. And in the f and also the um, the ratio of um, young people between young people and old people will be um, stressed as there will be more um, elderly, and the young people would have to support them. So I think the extension of the civil servant service is a good proposal. We have conducted a survey. We have interviewed about 1,200 Hong Kong citizens. We asked them, uh, with regards to the retirement age of civil service, do you want it to be extended? Uh, we have looked at the result of this study and we discovered that 75 percent of the interviewees agree to this proposal because they know that Hong Kong's population is aging. And there will be less and less young people, and also now um, aged people are also physically fitter. So they all agree that retirement age can be extended. As um, for the private sector, there is no such restriction. However, most of the companies will follow the government. So for the government's consultation this time around. Um, they suggest that for civilian grades, the retirement age can be extended to 65, and for the discipline services, it can be extended to 57 or even 60. And the Liberal Party welcomes these proposals. Just now, we've heard uh, members of the discipline forces saying that maybe the uh, retirement age can be further extended. I think, yes, we should make the best use of our talents. So if they are physically fit enough, and if there is such a demand in the community, I think the CSP should also consider extending the retirement age further. If you look at European countries as well as other peripheral countries, actually they have extended their retirement age age to 65 or even older. So I think Hong Kong can learn from these experiences. But I would like to uh, make another point. Now for the extension of the service of civil servants, if it's in overseas countries, that would be a strong objection. Um, about 80 percent of the people would say no. But in Hong Kong, it's different, and we have conducted a study on that. Because in Hong Kong, we have a um, self-reliant policy. In other countries, people have to pay high tax, and they can enjoy a lot of welfare from the government. So in Hong Kong, if we adopt another policy, then I think we should support people if they want to be self-reliant. So we support the proposal. Thank you, Mr. Seal. 
Next, civil servants and subsidized organizations committee, the Federation of Hong Kong and Kowloon Labor Unions, Mr. Tang Tak Ho, Chairperson. Good morning. Uh, gov the government is trying to extend the service of civil servants uh, because um, there are problems of aging population and um, shirking labor force. And we support this proposal. As for uh, subsidized um, organizations, uh, public bodies, they are also facing the same problem. So the government should also treat them the same so that for subsidized or subvented organizations, the employees can also uh, work beyond their retirement age of 60. They can still continue to serve uh, the people. Talents can be maintained. They, um, there will also be less succession problems, and the um, professionalism can also be enhanced. Uh, we represent a lot of uh, grassroots workers. We really hope that uh, our members can work after the age of 60 because now they really have to um, live on the small amounts of saving after retirement, and some can only get their MPF um, accrued benefits after the age of 65. So I th hope that um, for the government's uh, this new retirement policy should be extended to other uh, organizations. Now, the MPF um, accrued benefits really cannot support the retirement life of many people, and some of them have to work after the age of 65. So if um, all the subvented organizations can enjoy the same policy, then the um, junior staff can save more money for their retirement. As for new recruits, if the retirement age is extended to 65, we really welcome that. But of course, a free choice should be given to them. And the uh, maximum period is five years. And the um, government also should look at the succession problem in the subvented organizations. And try to find out a way to extend the service of the employees. We understand that the government is trying to implement this policy so that um, experienced staff can be retained and they can help to train up junior staff. And also this um, would help them lead a better retirement life. So sub uh, for subvented organizations, is the same. The Experienced staff can also share their experience with new recruits, and this will help make the organizations more stable and better service can be provided to Hong Kong's community. So we hope that the employees of the public bodies and civilian organizations can enjoy the same policy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tang. Next. From Hong Kong Modern Scale Staff Union Ch Vice Chairman Mr. Cho Yek Ko. Thank you, Madam Chair. In relation to this proposal announced by this unreasonable government, we have strong views. We uh, ask the government to follow the last retirement extension proposal. Our standing committee unanimously agreed that uh, we would. Uh, if um, this retirement proposal fa falls through, uh, there will be criticisms. As an independent labor union, our we need um, members' support, and our position will, of course, be based on uh, their wish. And we are making this con this decision, and ask for this arrangement because it doesn't benefit the junior ranks of staff and mem chair. Last night informed me uh, that uh, I need to elaborate on this point. Any dispute will cause the third party to lose out, just like the marginal effect. For example, the um, uh, recent uh, strike of taxi workers, uh, ta taxi drivers, and uh, dog workers. We must not. Deny the rights of workers to uh, protest and to stage a work strike. For example, for outsourced workers, if they go on a strike, apart from um, the, uh, I mean, um, the uh, owners and tenants will be affected. And lastly, I don't see 
how the government would suffer any loss if we adopt the practice last time. This is an incompetent and an impotent government. And this is also the um, sad situation of Hong Kong people. Thank you, Mr. Choi. Next. Um, it's a subcommittee of um, Workman 2 of FHD of the Government Mod 1 Scale Staff Union. Chairman Mr. Chen Shi Wa, about retiring, retiring at the age of 60 or 65, why is it that for higher ranks they can, um, their retirement age can be extended to 65 but not frontline workers like us? We are important. Let me ask you, without us, what will happen to Hong Kong? Now they can be extended to 65 years old. As for our frontline staff, many of them are new recruits, and they will reach their retirement age in three or four years. And they need to wait for five years before they can get the meager um, accrued benefits. Now this proposal is to extend the retirement age to 65 and really they really have high hopes. It's unreasonable for them to wait for five whole years before they get any retirement benefit. And um, with higher hopes in the end, they will get more disappointed because they would need to wait for your consultation exercise and your consultation findings. And uh, in the end, they don't stand to benefit anything because they will be retiring soon. In 1987, the government launched the new pension scheme. I think this proposal should be floated for consultation. Again, secondly, we ask for paid meal breaks. And this is already the practice of some um, in the private sector. But you don't give us paid meal breaks for our frontline workers. Your reply is that because of different um, nature of work, we don't get paid meal breaks. Our frontline staff have to work outdoors at the at over 30 um, degrees Celsius, and they get uh, soaked with sweat, and they don't get paid meal breaks. On the contrary, some clerical staff can stay indoor and enjoy the paid meal break. There are so many different grades and departments in the civil service, different uh, with different kinds of uh, work. And you say that some other departments can get paid meal breaks. This is just a perfunctory reply. So much for me. All right. Um, a number of individuals have not attended, so uh, may I now uh, turn to number twelve, Mr. Henry Ng. I am a young person who is concerned about the retirement or extending the retirement age of civil servants. I support this, and according to the paper submitted to LegCo by the government. In a five-year period starting from 2017-18 to 2022-23, civil servants' retirement uh, will retiring will surge from 6,000 to around 7,000. That is why the government is proposing to extend the retirement age for discipline services. They can retire. At present, at the age of 55 or 57, and it's now proposed to standardize the retirement age of 57, whereas for other grades, it can be uh, extended to up to 65. And extending retirement age is the practice adopted by many European countries in recent years, and they are doing it for the purpose of alleviating uh, government's financial burden. However, in Hong Kong, we what we lack is not money, but Workforce, and we have a succession gap. According to information, the uh, peak of uh, civil servants' retirement will be in 2017-18. Uh, that is why we need to ha uh, extend the retirement age, and we need civil servants to run the government. Um, and 
We we need to find suitable talents for the purpose of succession, and they must be trained. Uh, they it should not be done hastily. If we don't address succession problems, the civil service operation will be hindered. So uh, instead of um, objecting to extending the service of civil servants, we should try to resolve the problems. And under the existing system, there are uh, high rank officials in the government who would leave the government and work in the private sector after retirement. And the private sector would uh, pay a high salaries to the senior civil servants and this also affects young people's opportunities in working in the private sector. So extending the retirement age of civil servants would help young people get more job opportunities in the private sector. So why do we need to object to the extension of service of civil servants? Uh, next, Mr. Michael Fong, who has signed up, has not arrived. So I'll move on to next deputation. Oh yes, yeah, so Mr. Michael Fong. Thank you. As a young person, what I'm most concerned about in the future is an aging population. By 2041, close to one third of the population will be above the age of 65. I think we've all heard. Um, about this, and as a member of the workforce, this projection also means to me that I will have to support 1.5 uh, elderly people. We have high rental in Hong Kong, and um, there is unstable and uh, limited supply of PRH housing. And we all we we already have livelihood issues to tackle. So unless I'm as rich as Mr. Lee Ka Singh, this is really a um, worrisome situation. However, if we choose not to have children because of these problems, this would mean the working population or the aging population will continue to deteriorate. In uh, against this backdrop, of course, I support extending the service of civil servants. Government is the la uh, is the employer of the largest number of employees in the workforce. They should lead by example. Extending the retirement age of civil servants is nothing bad. Ha the uh, ha wealth gap in Hong Kong is getting wider, but on the whole, our living uh, quality is getting better and many would like to work beyond their retirement age. In fact, in, nine, in 1889, the German, uh, Germany Chancellor um, Bismarck already uh, proposed that to extend the retirement age and then a resolution was passed to extend the retirement age of 60 to 65. And Hong Kong is a developed and mature society. And yet, we are already a century late comparing to other developed places in extending the retirement age of civil servants. So our government is uh, late. Uh, this is a good measure, but I hope that after legislation, there should be equal opportunities and rights for junior ranks and senior ranks of staff. Labor unions are concerned that there is slim chance for junior ranks of civil servants to be retained uh, upon retirement, and civil servants should be given a right to decide whether to extend their own retirement age. Thank you, Mr. Fong. Next, from Hong Kong Customs Officers Union Vice Chairman Mr. Chen Kuang Kuang. Chairman members, good morning. About this consultation on extension of the civil service of civil servants, there is a, a huge demand, and we and our union support it. 
Uh, I have two points to make. First, our new recruits. If clerical grade staff can have their retirement age be uh, extended to the age of 65, we hope that for re uh, discipline services staff, their retirement age can be set at 60, and there should not be any obstacles to affect the such an extension. And because we are seeing a peak uh, in the number of retirees in the coming years, there should be a mechanism for re-employment or for extension of retirement of our staff. And we think the this is an appropriate measure. But first of all, our colleagues should be able to choose freely. And there should be ample time for them to decide whether to take part in the new uh, scheme or not. And in the application pr uh, process, the government should not just focus on their physical condition. Uh, I mean, for other criteria, they should not be uh, included for consideration. As for colleagues who are willing to work upon retirement, their benefits and welfare should not be uh, lower than the existing standard. As for the pros, retirement service contract positions. I think if the po for um, non civil service posts, I think this should not be discussed uh, in this consultation exercise. Next, Mr. Lee Siu Ka, executive member of the Hong Kong Correctional Services General Union. For a disciplined services staff recruited in the year of uh, 2000, he made some comments. Now, in 2004, he was at the age of um, the 24, and then he got married, and he just had a newborn, and he just uh, took out mortgage for a flat for 30 years, and then um, he welled up as he talked about um, his job. He said that he didn't want the government to give him money. He wanted to um, uh, work uh, till the age of 60 and earn with his own hard work. And for disciplined services staff, their uh, physical fitness would, of course, um, be on the decline as they age. And, and we have contributed to society. For ICAC, their retirement age is 60. I think their job is as physically demanding as other disciplined services. And many uh, in many countries, the retirement age is set at 60 or above. And with technological advancement and improvement in uh, the uh, work gear and different management mode for disciplined services, I can say for sure that many discipline services staff can work beyond the age of six, uh, 55. If we are able to plan ahead for uh, our work um, after 25, uh, after 55, before 60, it will help the enhancing the service standard. And according to the latest proposal for discipline services staff. For new recruits, the retirement age will be set at uh, 60 uh, for disciplined services staff, but nothing is mentioned about existing staff. I think colleagues should be allowed to choose to be employed according to the terms um, when they work on retirement so that uh, new recruits will get better conditions than um, serving staff. All of them um, were are recruited uh, in the year 2000 and <coughs> extending their retirement age will not affect succession or promotion of serving staff. And in 1987, there was a proposal which allowed clerical grade staff to choose from the old pension scheme to switch to the new pension scheme to extend the retirement age to 60. In future, 
we can implement the proposal in phases. And colleagues under the NPS can choose freely when to decide. For example, um, they can extend the service by two years uh, in 2015 or by 2020 to extend the service by three years and also 2020 in 2025 by four years and 2030 by five years. So that, as said in the paper, in the coming 20 or 30 years, um, as said in the paper, there could be a high wastage rate uh, or a drastic drop in the wastage rate of disciplined staff. And by ad adopting my proposal, this will not happen. I urge members to consider it. Uh, so much from me, and please forgive me. I have a sore throat, and I have taken up more time than needed. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Next, from Hong Kong Fire Services Department Staff General Association, Mr. Nip. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning. Well, Hong Kong's population is aging, and the average age of Hong Kong people is also growing. The government proposes that the service of civil servants should be extended. We generally support this. However, we have views on different points. For example, the government suggests that for the incumbent um, civil servants and for the new recruits, there may be different retirement age. And now uh, for the discipline services, the retirement age is at 50. But um, if it's to be extended to the age of 60, then there should be certain criteria. However, for the civilian grades, um, now the retirement age is 60, and it will be extended to um, 65 without any uh, restrictions. We think that all the retirement age, age should be extended to 65. And also, that we should be given a choice as to when we should retire. There sh should be a, a period during which we can choose our retirement age. So when it comes to the um, deployment of manpower, the departments can be more flexible. And after extending the retirement age, the calculation of pensions, provident fund, and MPF uh, would be different. So the government should also be looking at this point. Thank you. Next, government frontline employees union hawker control team staff branch, Mr. Wong Ka Fai. Thank you, Chairman. About extension of the service of the civil servants, uh, we should also a look at the staff that are on contract terms. Now, before I joined the civil service, I was also um, on contract for the government. It's like um, cheap labor. I used to work for the FEHD. Um, my entrance requirements were the same as other civil servants, but I was on contract, so my pay was lower. And my pay was even lower than my um, subordinate, and he's a civil servant. I also only had seven um, day offs. A year and even during um, number eight typhoon and black rain, I had to work. Our pay was almost 30 to 40 percent lower than um, those of similar grades. So, for um, contract staff uh, pays and benefits, they should be comparable, comparable to um, civil servants, uh, similar ranks. These um, staff uh, will not be replacing civil servants, and also their retirement age should be extended. The government suggests that the new recruits' retirement age will be extended. Unfortunately, for the um, serving civil servants, they cannot enjoy this new policy. So the government should consider the impact caused by this, and it should also provide justification for its reasoning. The government has never paid attention to the retirement life of um, civil servants. So we think that the government should look at the problem more closely, and it should continue its dialogues with its staff. The government should not adopt an across-the-board approach and should consider all 
types of factors. I am a civil servant working under the new uh, system, and it's just like um, other colleagues that are working under the same system. We want to talk to the secretary himself. Please come to meet us at different departments so that we can have a direct dialogue with you. By doing so, the government would know exactly what our aspirations are. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Next. The next Mr. Wong has not arrived yet. So let us invite the next representative to speak. It's Mr. Lang Tet Wa, Vice Chairman of the Model Scale One Staff Consultation Council staff side. Thank you. We understand that for Model Scale One staff, we know that um, it's not likely the government will extend our retirement age. The government is trying to solve the problem of aging population and a shrinking labor force. So why doesn't the government also extend our retirement age? The government asked different departments to consider whether the employees beyond Retirement age should continue to be employed. So only the government has to say we don't. And this also has to be approved by heads of departments. And you will, if you do that, you will just create a culture in which we will have to um, share the shoes of our superiors. So I hope that there can be more flexibility. And civil servants should be given a choice to choose whether we want to stay uh, after retirement. We really do not want to see the culture of boots licking. In 1987, there was a change in the civil service system, and there was a five-year consultation. We could um, consider whether we wanted to leave the civil service at that time. Well, the government is worried that if a lot of retirees stay, then there will be a promotion blockage. However, we are just very junior staff, so there is no problem of so-called promotion blockage. So uh, we. They also think that government should stop outsourcing its work. If there are still outsourcing schemes, then it is very unlikely that we can continue to work after retirement for the government. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Lang. The next representative, Mr. Chen, has not arrived yet. So our next speaker will be Mr. Li Yao Tong, Government Electrical and Mechanical Works Supervisors, Craftsmen and Workmen Association. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, everyone. Now, um, there is a shortage of, of manpower in the civil service. The government now proposes to extend the service of them, so um, the government knows um, this problem. However, after looking at the consultation paper, we are very disappointed because it's not really looked at the issue of manpower shortage. Now, for EMSD, we provide comprehensive services to the government and the community, and we are also regulators of uh, certain sectors. However, from um, 20 um, 10 to 2014, uh, manpower has been dwindling, and this problem will deteriorate, deteriorate in the coming years. As for our sector, um, even in the private sector, there is a manpower shortage problem. Of course, we have a fund, and we can um, contract out the work. However, even in the private sector, there are not enough workers. So we really want that. Um, really hope that we can work, still work after the age of 60. But the um, consultation paper is not comprehensive. It has not heard our voices. I hope that a multi-pronged approach can be adopted by the government so that the manpower shortage problem can be resolved. In the long run, we hope that the government will look at the um, practice adopted in 1987 and a free choice to be given to civil servants as to whether they want to stay beyond um, retirement and the um, oldest retirement age should be 65. And 
EMSD should also relax the re-employment uh, policy. Now, some of our retirees are employed by the department again on contract terms. However, the market is very competitive, so some would like to um, work in the private sector. Now, we have 1,300 non-civil service staff working in our department. However, the private sector is very attractive, so how can the government um, retain these uh, talents? We think that the re-employment uh, policy should be enhanced so that more civil service retirees can be attracted to stay in a civil service. And also for the consultation paper, as I'm as it's also extending the period of 90 days to 120 days, we also support that because in the short run, this can resolve the manpower problem. However, in the EMSD, we hope that this can be implemented as soon as possible so that we can um, resolve the recru recruitment problem. We know that we are talking about long-term policies, but it, we have an urgent manpower shortage problem, so this problem has to be resolved immediately. We hope that a choice can be given to our retirees so that um, they can extend their service by at most five years. Next, Mr. Isaac Shui, Chairman of the Immigration Service Officers Association. Now, with regard to the CSB's consultation paper, there are four major points and we would like to respond to them. First of all, about extending the retirement age of new recruits. And for the disciplined services, um, it will be extended to 60. We um, adopted open attitude towards this. We hope that the um, retirement age for disciplined services can be extended to 60. And second, the government will have to pay more provident fund if the retirement age is extended. So when the government looks at the relevance ratio, it should adopt the existing practice. That is, um, the uh, provident fund should increase in accordance with the years of service. We support the government proposals and arrangements, and we hope that the new proposal can be implemented by the government as soon as possible, and more flexibility and autonomy should be given to different um, departments when it comes to approving um, these kind of applications. But of course, this kind of uh, mechanism should be transparent and just. The government should treat um, serving civil servants and new recruits um, in the same manner. So for civil servants under new pension system and old pension systems, they should also be able to enjoy the new policy. And when this uh, people are re-employed after retirement. Their original pay level uh, should be um, taken into consideration. As for the new uh, post-retirement service contract scheme, the this new scheme should not affect the promotion of staff in that department and also. Um, it should not affect the policy of uh, recruiting new people. And different departments should also look at the nature of their work, and they should be given the power to approve um, their application for extending retirement age. Bing. And we welcome the proposal to streamline the application procedure for post-retirement outside work. And. Uh, Upon completing the consultation exercise on extending the retirement age of civil servants, the government will collect the data and uh, make an analysis and report to civil servants. And we're happy to continue to give our views. And we ex uh, we look forward to um, the government's giving us a implementation timetable as well as the details. Thank you, Mr. I. Next, from Hong Kong Food and Environmental Hygiene Department Staff Rights Union, Mr. Wong Chin Heng. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning. This is uh, the union's stance. We absolutely support 
extending the retirement age of civil servants. But the um, what is of paramount importance is to have flexibility. Retirement age, be it 55, 57 to 60. It's up to the, the uh, staff in the department to decide freely when to retire. And we also against the broad brush approach of uh, making everyone retire at the same age. Now, let me talk about um, the Hawkers uh, staff, Hawkers control staff in the FHT. In the coming years, around 700 staff will retire. From 2007 to July 2013, we recruited a total of 414 workmen. 96 of them already left the post with a high uh, wastage rate of 23.2%. As for Hawker control team, it's 23%. So for new recruits, we have a high wastage rate. And there will be a succession gap in the department. And also the problem of high wastage rate. On, um, in terms of workload, it's too heavy. Uh, members of the public have higher expectations of our service, and with a shrinking um, workforce in our department, we're facing huge pressure. Suc recruitment can far from catching up with peop uh, staff retiring, so. It is very important for experienced staff to transfer their knowledge to new recruits. That's why we support the government's proposal to extend the retirement age of civil servants. Now, our union suggests the government consider the following points. For serving colleagues in the extended retirement age between 60 and 65, uh, the retirees should be employed on con contract basis, which can be reviewed annually. This can help address the issue of a surplus of staff after the peak retirement peak. And as one ages and reaches middle age, the physical condition may decline, and the um, different civil servants may have different financial or family circumstances. So civil servants should be given the right to decide whether they wish to be retained instead of what is said in the paper. That is up to the uh, head of grade or head of department to unilaterally decide whether to extend the service period of the staff. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Next, Mr. Chen Cho from the Association of Customs and Excise Service Officers. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we think that for disciplined services staff, the retirement age should be set at 60, and it should not be subject to any conditions. That is, for staff under different systems, on pensionable terms or on contractual terms, they should be able to choose freely without any screening. Otherwise, the, um, the department will um, have problems of favoritism and uh, shoe shining culture. As for physical fitness or performance, I don't think these are um, practicable. Uh, if it has to do with performance, then under the existing mechanism, it can be dealt with. If someone is un uh, physically unfit, uh, they won't stay in the post even if you ask them to. So there should not be any hurdles to prevent colleagues from choosing to retire beyond retirement age. And the power should not be, or the decision should not be left to the head of grade or the head of department. Otherwise, there would be um, favoritism in the department. and. Nowadays, the public is having high expectations on uh, our frontline staff, uh, for example, enforcement uh, standard and service quality. In the coming five years, the whole government, uh, including our department, uh, will be facing a retirement problem. In the coming five years, 
Around 200 inspector grade staff will be retiring, which accounts for 23% of the total establishment. As for junior rank and file grade, um, uh, there are 800 of them, 22%. And um, I think for new recruits joining the department, they have limited experience in enforcing the law and the service quality will not be able to catch up in the coming five years. Extending the retirement age will help enhance our uh, standard of enforcing the law and our service standard. As for non-civil servants, non-civil service contract terms in recent years, um, many Colleagues have been employed on contract terms in recent years. For example, for implementing the uh, milk uh, baby formula um, import ban, and many staff uh, has been employed on contract terms, and yet they can offer limited help to our actual work um, in relation to um, people detained and our inspector. Will also have to uh, oversee their work, so we think we uh, the government should extend the retirement age of civil servants as soon as possible. Thank you. Next, Mr. Larry Fai, um, Chairman of Hong Kong Immigration Assistance Union. Thank you, Madam Chair. Now this um, consultation is about extension of the civ uh, of the service of civil servants. It's not about retirement, and our Union um, keeps up. Um, it's open-minded, but um, we think um, there should be equality. For example, in the consultation paper, they call those not yet recruited new recruits, and also for those reaching the age of 57, should they wish to work beyond retirement, they will be subject to physical uh, tests, etc. And we have reservations. I think the retirement age should at least be extended to. The age of 60, like clerical grade staff, this is about extension of the service of civil servants. Because in the coming decades, um, there won't be any civil servants on pensionable terms. Everyone will be on the CSPF terms. So this is about extending the service of civil servants. As for existing staff, there are three kinds. Uh, some under the old pension scheme, some under the new pension scheme, and some under the civil service provident fund scheme. They have three different um, kinds of uh, benefits. And uh, first of all, I think they should be standardized for those um, under the old pension scheme. They can be reemployed on contract terms after the age of 55 because. For them, um, they get pension payment. As for those under CSPF, we need to strive for job opportunities or the right to work for them. After they leave the post at the age of 55, but when they uh, they need to wait for 10 years till 65 before they receive the accrued benefits under the fund uh, scheme. So we need to strive for the right to work for them, and yet their right to work should not be on a contractual basis. That is to say, their post should be extended without a break. As for employing um, retirees, if there is a need. Um, to cope with the workload, then uh, um, regular staff should be employed instead of uh, post service um, employees or retirees. As for other points, I think we'll wait for the new consultation uh, report before we comment further. Next, the Junior Police Officers Association of the Hong Kong Police, Police Force Council Staff Side Chairman Mr. Chen Chou Kwong. Thank you, Madam Chair. Now, after the government floated this proposal, our association 
conducted another questionnaire survey and we received 17,897 questionnaires and uh, um, they, they, we accounted for 40 percent and uh, 70 percent. I mean, um, uh, 30 percent uh, will be leaving the force in the, at the age of uh, 55. Now, according to the proposal, uh, this can be extended uh, up to 57. There is a, a, a gap of eight years, and there is age discrimination. Discipline services staff will be required to undergo a fitness test for extension. Um, this is against the principle of equality. Even if the age limit can be pushed back to 60, we can only say that this is reinstating the retirement age limit of the police force to 60. According to our questionnaire surveys, if 70 percent uh, of respondents wishes to stay, uh, some 30 percent would still decide to leave the post, and this will alleviate the impact of the retirement peak and will also prevent the problem of a succession or promotion uh, problem. That is why we're asking for the retirement age of police officers to be extended to the age of 65 or at least to reinstate the retirement age of 60. And we also ask for um, doing away with the fitness uh, test requirement uh, when an officer reaches the age of 57. As for serving officers, between the age of 60 and 65, there should not be any uh, physical examination, and we also we're also against employing um, non uh, police officers on contract terms to alleviate the problem of short um, manpower shortage shortage because they're after all not police officers and they actually get in the way of um, uh, the police officers' work. They can in no way alleviate the uh, problem of uh, manpower shortage. It cannot um, resolve the problem of difficulties in recruiting police officers. With low birth rate two decades ago and with an aging population and a, a shrinking labor force, there will, will, will envisage uh, very soon there will be a um, difficulty in recruiting police officers. So by the end of this year or in early next year, the proposal of extending the retirement of civil servants should be implemented to address the problem of difficulty in recruiting police officers. Thank you, Mr. Ch Chen. Next, our rights officer, Mr. Stephen Chair of Government Employees Association. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the consultation on the extension of the service of civil servants, we have two points to make. If the retirement age of new recruits in the future will be extended to the age of 65, then for um, civil servants employed under the new terms uh, after June 20, the year 20, 2000 should also be allowed to retire at 65. We don't want to see um, different service periods for the two uh, different batches of uh, employees recruited under the new new scheme. As uh, on the other hand, we also agree that there should be a Post retirement service contract scheme for retired civil servants on pensionable terms, and uh, it should be subject to open recruitment. This is more flexible. Retirees on pension can choose whether to apply for post retirement work, and this at the same time it doesn't affect the promotional prospect of serving civil servants. This can also help transfer knowledge and skills unique to um, the civil service and it can also adjust the different age groups in the uh, civil service so as to prevent any succession gap because of a surge in the number of new recruits. And these should be supernumerary posts as for streamlining the control regime of post service employment for non directorate civil servants at junior ranks, we support it, but we think that 
this control regime should only apply to um, those medium rank or lower, that is uh, at MPS 0.33 or below. As for higher rank civil servants, uh, they, they, um, their work nature is more sensitive, and a stringent control regime should be implemented. Okay. Next, Mr. Chang Yuk Lang, Chairman of the Discipline Services Consultative Council, Council Staff Side. Good morning. Well, we have collected a lot of views from our members. So let us look at the consultation paper for the proposal of extending the retirement age from 55 to 57 and 57 to 56 for the um, discipline services when it's compared with the uh, proposed retirement age of 65 for civilian grades. There is the difference of eight years, so we don't think this is fair. As for civilian grades staff, um, do they not need to be fit when they work? For example, some of them have to um, enforce the law. For example, some ICAC staff, they even are equipped with guns, and for um, FEHT staff, they have some of them have to arrest hawkers, and for nurses, they have to be physically fit working in hospitals. So we shouldn't have this wrong impression that as for civilian grade staff, they are working quietly in an air-conditioned room. This is not um, the actual situation. As for another proposal, we think that the um, management side is well protected, but it has not looked at the issue from uh, the staff side's perspective. The staff side should be given the choice um, as to when they should retire so that they can plan for their life. We are also worried about the culture of boots leaking, so there should be a fair and just um, system as to where whether a fitness test should be carried out for discipline services. We uh, already have some guidelines in place. For example, if a person has taken uh, many sick leaves, so um, does it have to undergo a fitness test? And in 1987, there was a new uh, pension scheme. The staff were allowed to choose whether they want to remain in the civil service or they want to have another choice. So um, it was a very good system. And ever since this consultation started, many of our members have expressed their interest in extending um, their retirement age because um, nowadays in our society, people tend to get married late and have children late, so they really want to have longer working lives. And for uh, people in the middle management like us, we also want to retain good staff in the service. Then we can provide better service to the community. As for the uh, proposal C, well, as stated in the consultation paper, it states that retired civil servants um, should be reemployed, and such positions um, should not be given to new recruits. Um, we agree to that because otherwise this will deal a blow at the moral of um, our staff. We hope that uh, the new system will be fair and just, and also staff should be given a choice. We also do not want to see um, the culture of boot licking. Thank you, Mr. Cheng. Next, Mr. Lam Champing, Vice Chairman of the Working Group for TOA in Housing Departments. Chairman, members, and deputations. Now, for our working group, we do not object to the extension of service of civil servants. And the Housing Department will be producing a lot of housing in the coming years. So the department should be better prepared for secession in the department so that there can be better technical interfaces on in different areas. 
as for employing retired um, civil servants to take up certain positions, we adopt an open attitude. As for re-employing retired civil servants to do um, their original jobs, we are a bit worried because this may create a uh, promotion blockage. No matter what methods will be adopted for the extension of the service of civil servants, we hope that the method can be fair, just and transparent. Thank you, Mr. Lam. Next, Mr. Ko Siu Kei, committee member of the Hong Kong Fire Services Department Ambulance Men's Union. I speak on behalf of the Ambulance Men's Union. We absolutely object to the extension of the of our service. Now, I would like to tell you what our job is like. We really have to uh, work under huge time pressure. We have to get to the injured or deceased as soon as possible. We have to treat them as soon as possible, send them to hospital as soon as possible. So we um, have a heavy workload. We have to be physically very fit, and we need to under need to work under huge pressure. Now, our workload has increased, has increased significantly, but the manpower has not increased accordingly. So um, it creates a huge fiscal uh, pressure on us. And we retire by the age of 55. And we, before retirement, we have to do frontline work every day. And even at the age um, of 54, you still have to go up um, numerous flights of ladders to um, take care of a victim. So why are we doing all this? This is um, to make a living. However, now we cannot even enjoy a proper meal um, during our work. Now we've heard the voices of uh, some of our members. They want to work a few years more. Uh, maybe the children are so young, they are still studying, so that's why they are forced to continue to work. And some of them may have uh, kept their body physically fit, so they want to work for a few years more. And I think the policy can be formulated in um, the way so that um, if members of our uh, Union want to work longer, they should be allowed to do so. But I think better uh, working conditions should be provided to us. But on the whole, we do not uh, support the extension of the service um, in our department unless our working condition is improved. Otherwise, we will definitely not support this. Thank you, Mr. Go. Next, Mr. McCam, Vice Chairman of the Government Discipline Services General Union. Uh, before the uh, publication of this consultation paper, we heard that um, this consultation paper wanted to find a direction. And I think today we have talked very clearly about the direction. That is, we will support uh, the consultation paper. As for our union, we think that well, when the uh, consultation paper was formulated, was formulated, or when details are formulated in the future, I think some certain areas have to be clarified. As for the work of disciplined services, is very professional, and it's not just about strings. We have a lot of professional people working in our services, so I hope that when the details are formulated. You have to look into this. That is, we have the right to work. For people who have not entered our services yet, why um, will there be such a big difference in retirement age? I think in the future, our retirement age should be aligned. And also, a choice should be given to each officer. If an officer thinks he's not fit to do the job anymore, of course he would not work after retirement. And when he enters the force, or when he entered the force, he already knew that when he's supposed to retire. So this is our view. There is one thing very important uh, for us. We are capable, and we want to serve. So if that is the case, we should have the right to work. For the serving civil servants, if they have the ability, 
why do they have to be to be screened by the department before they can continue to work beyond retirement. So I hope that the government can take this into consideration in the future. Now, do you want a capable and dedicated person to work for the government, or you want a new recruit which um, you do not know um, how dedicated he is? As a conscientious employer, if he kicks a capable person out and give up his valuable experience is really unacceptable. The government has provided a lot of training to us, and if you um, kick us out and we have to work in the private market, our experience may not be treasured in the private sector. So this would become a lose lose situation. Thank you, Chairman Mack. Next, Mr. Choi Takman, Deputy Secretary, Secretary General of the Hong Kong Chinese Civil Servants Association. As for the extension of the service of civil servants, it does not only affect civil servants, but it also affects the whole society. So when the CSB decides on the policy, it has to look at different factors from macro and micro perspectives. And for macro perspective, it should look at its impact on the short term, long and long term um, manpower supply in Hong Kong, and also look at the quality and quantity of service. And also for extending the service, how much financial implication um, on the part of the government that we're talking about. And from a macro perspective, uh, we should look at the short term, medium term and long term impact um, in different departments and grades. For example, a promotion, succession, work relationship, work deployment, um, great uh, future sol um, qual surf quality of service. Etc. And also, you should look at the um, promotion uh, pressure, a family relationship, personal per career path, uh, pay and benefits, etc. Of individual officers. Thirdly, you should also be looking at different systems. For example, a pension system, civil service. Provident fund system, as well as other systems, you should compare these systems and schemes, and what their impacts will be on the civil servants. So, for extending the service of civil servants, this is in response to the aging population and shrinking labor force in the coming thirty years. So, the most important thing we have to look at is. How to extend the years of service of civil servants in the government, and we shouldn't be uh, placing uh, hurdles um, in the course of doing this. Next, Mr. Chong Chi. From Hong Kong Fire Services Services Association, our association welcomes the government's consultation document, and we conducted a questionnaire earlier on. And over seventy percent of our members agree to extending the service of civil servants, and they also find it uh, absolutely necessary to have to give to be given uh, freedom to choose, and uh, there is no undertaking of extending the civil service. Um, in the paper, and uh, may I refer to the paper in paragraph three point three point six? It said that for discipline services staff, they would need to go through an annual assessment on their um, physical condition and their work performance before they can uh, have their retirement age extended to the age of sixty. In fact, the lead line is drawn at fifty seven because discipline service. Says officer's um, job uh, is physically demanding, 
and their physical fitness uh, may be on the decline. But in fact, this is unjustified. According to many studies and uh, research conducted overseas, many disciplined of service officers can work till 60 or even 65 in other places. So we do not agree to this paragraph. At the same time, maybe the government would need to con uh, account to the public why um, the existing pre retirement age would be extended from 57 to so long. Um, so uh, we can reluctantly accept an, a medical examination. However, if the there is a double assessment on physical fitness as well as work performance. We find this suitability assessment unacceptable. If this is a requirement for discipline services, grades uh, to extend the retirement age to 60, but not other service grades, we uh, really don't agree. As for other paragraphs, we also have some uh, questions. We have um, higher life expectancy, life expect expectancy now, and this is in fact the situation across whole, the whole of Hong Kong. So why is it that for discipline services officers, their retirement age can only be extended um, to 57 or 60, whereas for other, the for others they can be extended to 65. This can further. This will further um, widen the service year gap between disciplined services staff and other civil servants. Many would wish to work beyond retirement. So we hope the government can do this. That is for new recruits, especially those under the Civil Service Provident Fund. Um, something must be done to help them tied over the five-year period uh, window period. Thank you. Next, from Hong Kong Senior Government Officers Association, Mr. Chen Sai Wing, Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chair. In fact, the retirement peak of civil service will rise from 2007 uh, onwards, and uh, some 40 percent will be leaving their posts. I think there are two major problems. Before 2007, during a five-year period, uh, the government froze in, uh, the recruitment of civil servants. That's why there is succession problem in, uh, uh, in uh, the civil service. And we are just considering um, the uh, retirement peak uh, starting from 20. Seven, and yet many civil servants are not on pensionable terms, and their stability I mean, the stability of their post may be in question, and uh, it's, it's expected that many, uh, in the face of instability, will uh, leave their post. And in terms of uh, retirement age, we think the flexible approach should be taken. More importantly, uh, civil service must be maintained. Civil servants serve the public, and every day uh, they serve the people of Hong Kong on various fronts. And as Secretary mentioned, on various occasions, we have no problem in recruiting new staff. The problem actually lies with how we can allow knowledge transfer from these experienced staff with over 30 years of knowledge at their work. So we need to step up training for um, the uh, younger uh, civil servants. And uh, these experienced staff may be responsible for training the young generation um, for professional grades or uh, discipline services officers. These staff can be retained for training uh, for training the younger uh, recruits. Um, and instead of causing a promotional blockage, these experienced staff can actually help. Um, enhance the promotional prospect of the younger generation. So we need staff for the purpose. 
as for civil servants staying on upon retirement, instead of just filling vacancies, they should be allowed to take part in actual training. The government should have clear training targets to cope with the manpower needs in the coming 10 years. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Okay, last deputation. Vice Chairman Mr. Yong Kwai Reng, Hong Kong um, Government General Employees Union. Thank you, Madam Chair. Now, our union supports the uh, policy of extending the retirement age of civil servants in the face of an aging population and a shrinking labor force. So we support Proposal A of the paper that is to adopt a higher retirement age for civil service new recruits to 65. We also support um, Proposal C, and that is for post um, for a post-retirement service contract scheme to be introduced, and for uh, members of our uh, civil servants on pensionable terms, the pension payments should only be dispersed after the age of 60. This will not extend the uh, pension payment, and this will can also help standardize uh, the uh, CSPF scheme. However, we staunchly oppose allowing head of, head of grades or head of departments to um, select uh, who can stay on after retirement. This policy, first of all, should allow the government to lead by example so that the private sector can also retain more staff to cope with the um, reducing productivity due to an aging population. There should not be any hurdles or selective mechanism. Our proposal is this. First of all, the uh, retiring civil servants should remain in their post and work up on upon retirement age so uh, that they don't need to have a pay cut. Secondly, um, head of grades or head of de departments should not further employ officers on a neat and selective basis. Thirdly, some junior rank staff Uh, for control rank staff, um, the recruitment of which uh, has been frozen, we believe they they should also come under this proposal. All in all, this proposal aims to tackle an aging population in Hong Kong. If there is a selection mechanism, and if there are hurdles go through, civil servants would not be discouraged to apply for extension, and this proposal will fail. Um, both parties should work together, frankly, to implement this proposal and to contribute to our population policy. Thank you, Mr. Yong. So deputations and individuals who have signed up to express the views here have done so, and I will invite the um, Secretary for Public Service to speak first. Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, I thank deputations and individuals for coming here to express your views on the consultation document. It's several. It's still several days uh, until the uh, end of the consultation period. We will collect all views and decide our way forward carefully. We don't have a timetable yet. Of course, we ha have uh, heard. Um, that it should be implemented as soon as possible, and yet we need to carefully consider all the views, and I'd like to respond to some of the views expressed. First of all, as mentioned by many, this proposal uh, is floated in the face of an aging population and the shrinking labor force in Hong Kong. Of course, uh, this is not just the only objective or the only uh, proposal under consideration. We also would like to encourage more people to give births and also to import talents.
from overseas. Uh, but of course, um, extending the service of the of civil servants is one of the starting points. And we also encourage subvented organizations in the private sector to consider doing so. Of course, it's, uh, they have their own circumstances, but on the whole, the idea is to extend the service of serving officers. On the point of flexibility, we're trying to deal with the search in retirement in the coming decade, and there will be flexibility since there will also be recruitment um, for serving civil servants. The line to be drawn is this. This is about serving um, uh, civil servants yet to be recruited. As for the retirement arrangement for staff on civil service provident fund, um, that is not on pensionable terms. I'd like to clarify that no matter when they retire, uh, at the age of 60, they can get the um, co government's contribution. Even when they retire at the age of 50, uh, as long as they declare that they're not going to work again, they can also get the mandatory um, portion. Now, we're not taking a uh, across the board approach because of several reasons. Over the past decade, we have uh, done a lot in terms of succession. And the vacancies have been filled through promotion and recruitment. In the coming 10 years, for individual grades and departments, the situation may be more dire. There should be flexibility, therefore, for these grades and departments to uh, handle the uh, retirement search. And this is not limited to senior ranks, but also all ranks. And I'd like to explain here that this proposal will not cause um, existing uh, polls to be replaced. We have a regular mechanism for that. However, there are individual grades and departments that have specific succession problems. Um, there are also a need to further employ the existing um, officers. And This can also provide flexibility to deal with uh, seasonal or ad hoc tasks so that retirees can be employed on contract terms under the proposed PRSC scheme to help us. If we take a across the board approach, we have concerns. Of course, the colleagues themselves must give consent, but if they agree, we still think that there is a need to be selective because we do not want to affect the promotional prospect of talents. If we take an across-the-board approach, it may affect the promotional prospect of serving younger officers. This may not be the best arrangement for um, boosting morale. And about the situation in the 1980s, uh, it's very different from now. Uh, at that time, there was a rapid expansion of the civil service establishment. But since 2007-08, our civil service establishment has been, uh, our growth has been maintained at 1%, and we anticipate a rather steady growth in the coming years. So by projection, from 2013 uh, 14 to 2017 18, the rate of retirement will be about 3.7%. So we don't see a need to uh, take a, an across the board approach, uh, across the board approach to extend the retirement age. This will also affect younger generation in joining the civil service. So we need to be careful. 
We understand that um, some civil servants are very concerned if there is a selection process, uh, would it uh, be unfair in certain areas? Actually, departments are already doing this, and we agree that we should talk to the departments more so that we can come up with a more fair and just system to handle this kind of applications. And also for disciplined services and their concerns. That is, how come we are just extending the retirement age to 57? Well, we actually want it to be extended to 60. However, we are very concerned about the uh, physical requirements of um, the discipline services. So that's why we want to set it at 57 now. And after that, fitness test would have to be carried out. We will continue to um, listen to your views in this regard. And we will continue our dialogues with you. And one of the representatives has also mentioned the financial implications um, on public finance. We need an actual risk to do the calculation for us. And also for new recruits, we will also have to look at their long term retirement uh, arrangements. So, all this will be taken into consideration. Thank you. Three members uh, want to speak. Me, uh, Wang Kwok Heng, Emily Lau, Xin Chong Kai, Yip Kin Yun, Lang Chi Chang, and Mr. Kwok. And also uh, Vice Chairman Poon. The discussion of this item will end at 11.45. And also, Mr. Leung Kwok Hong wants to speak. So many members want to speak, so I'll give you, each of you three minutes. Ms. Emily Lau, thank you. And I would like to thank the deputations uh, for the representatives of um, civil servants unions um, to come to express their ex views. We have been listening very carefully to you. We hope that we can forge a consensus eventually. We've heard the views of the frontline and junior rank civil servants. They say that their pay is not that high, so they really want to work for more years. And I think the secretary should really look at this. Well, they think that they really cannot um, retire comfortably, so that's why they want to work for a few more years. And we have just new proposal, but I don't think the management should make all the decision. And some even suggest that a new um, service scheme should be set up so that the uh, retiring civil servants can work under that, and that would be fairer. And Chairman, I've also noted that the um, also looked at Mr. Ko's view. He is from the ambulance men's um, union. He has of an other view. But I would like to ask the administration or the deputations, do you think that the decision should not be made by the management and there should be another mechanism? Um, to handle applications? Please raise your hand if you want to answer this question. Oh, we are civil servants. We all know about this. If you let the management choose, um, they will definitely choose their cronies, and most of us cannot benefit. So for trade unions, we want to help all the uh, workers. We want all of them to uh, be protected. Mr. Wong Kang Fai, we, ho we hope that the government can um, Publish central guidelines for FCHD. We have over 12,000 um, employees, and we are of different ranks. I think the director will delegate the power of um, selecting people to his subordinates. So definitely, different camps will be formed. So I hope that a better mechanism can be set up. Yes, I agree. And there are some other representatives who would like to speak. 
I don't think we should oversimplify the problem. We are talking about the right to work, and we are born with it. For the new recruits after June of 2000, they already knew that they have to retire by the age of 57. But before that, all the civilian grade uh, officers had to retire by 55. And after 1987, it's extended to 60. So for us, this is a spring that comes late. For those who enter the force after June 2000, we should have the right to work till 60. This is the rights that we should be entitled to. Well, some people are saying that um, they have a huge workload. Yes, I understand that, but if you have no money, that's even worse. I also want to retire now, but I cannot make ends meet. So please think about this. We are not insatiable, we are not insatiable people, in particular members of the discipline services. If we have money, of course we want to retire. From 55 to 60, um, it was changed in 1987. In the 80s, the government recruited too many civil servants, and now there will be a wave of retirement. Uh, for those who are on pensionable terms, that's okay. If you retire, you can still get two thirds of your monthly income. Now we are fighting for those who are not on pensionable terms. In 1987, we lost our right. The civil serf, the civil uh, civilian grace uh, officer could, well, can work until 60, but not for us. And for ICACs, they are also a disciplined service. So how come their staff can work until s the age of 60? And uh, Mr. Liu Tong also wants to speak. Please be succinct. We think that this should be extended to 65. However, a free choice should be given to our staff. It should not be decided by the department, and the management should not be making the selection. Okay, then I'll ask questions. I have a very simple question for the secretary. Just now, you said that for this plan, it is because there will be a wave of retirement in um, a few years' time, and after that, there will not be a significant problem. So you do not want to make a big change to the system. Just now, you've heard the deputations. Most of them, other than the ambulance men, hope that the years of work or employment can be extended because they still have a livelihood problem. And also, this can mitigate the impacts of aging population on our society. And for serving civil servants, their conditions and treatment should not be different from those of new recruits. Well, if you give the same treatment to the incumbent civil servants, would it mean a huge change? Would you have to amend the pension ordinance? Do you need an actuarist to make all the calculations? Is it too complicated? I already explained just now. We have to consider several issues. First of all, about uh, promotion. Now, for um, the civil service establishment, we are subject to certain uh, restrictions. Of course, uh, for promotion, um, it's not like um, after you've worked for a number of years, then you will be promoted. You have to, we have to look at your performance as well. However, if the positions are not left vacant, then there will be a promotion blockage. And also, there may be mismatch. Well, in some departments, um, 
they may not have enough experienced staff, so they want the retiring staff to uh, re remain. However, in some other departments, it may not be so. So if all the retiring staff stay, then we may not recruit new staff for one or two years, and this will also create an impact. Now we are putting forward a, a proposal with flexibility. Not all retiring civil servants want to work full time, so we want to have this flexibility to handle the problem. And for new recruits, the retirement age will be extended. This is to tie in with our future policy concerning aging population. Secretary, you have not answered my question. Now you have to make calculations. And why, if it's um, incumbent civil servants are also given the right to um, choose to work longer, then do you have to amend uh, the pension ordinance? Yes, we may have to do that. In the 80s, the government launched a new retirement scheme. So at that time, um, so the civil servants were allowed to choose between the new scheme and um, the old scheme. But now the government is not going to revamp the retirement scheme. It's just about the working years. In the 80s, it was an overhaul. and. This time around, we are not doing this, and this also cannot address the um, problem of retirement in the coming ten years. Mr. Wong Kok Heng, well, for the civil service, now there is a succession problem. There are many uh, reasons causing this. This is not a problem that occurred overnight. You know, because in earlier years, the government has stopped recruiting pensionable civil servants for a number of years. And there were many um, civil servants working on contract terms. So that's why we are facing this problem now. Now the government proposes to extend the service of civil servants. And this is a temporary solution. Now, even if we have to make use of the solution, the government still has to address three issues. Uh, first of all, how can we prevent um, the f uh, formation of the culture of boots licking? And second, we should continue to nurture young talents, and there should not be a promotion blockage. This is also a very important point. Otherwise, unfairness and injustice will be brought to the system. And also, the civil servants should be given a free choice. So for this three points, I think the secretary should Tell us how he's going to handle these uh, problems. Secretary, thank you, Mr. Wong, for the questions. As I said just now, we're also concerned about the promotion prospect. We would like to see normal promotional uh, prospect uh, for serving officers. Apart from that, we have new recruits, we have a natural wastage, and that happens to every organization. The important point is that exactly because of this reason, we don't see a need to have um, a uniformed approach. As for freedom of choice, some may worry that there may be cronyism, uh, and uh, so in some departments, there may not be a need for 
uh, retirees to be retained despite the wish of um, the uh, retiring civil servants. Now, we will consider, uh, um, and also it's up to departments to consider the service needs, etc. And of course, there should be an open and impartial mechanism in proving applications. So, will the government consider this? Apart from the head of grades or head of department making this decision, there should also be an independent mechanism to oversee this. There should be an independent, independent committee for the purpose, so as not to affect your colleague's morale. Secretary, I think on the one hand, under the existing system, in terms of re-employment, that is, the officer staying in the original post, the CSB's approval is needed. I think in the next stage we can decide uh, and consider how we can uh, enhance the element of a third party overseeing the department. Next, Mr. Sin Chung Kai. Well, actually, my question is similar to Ms. Emily Lau's. I understand the disciplined service staff, that is the police, may have different concerns in other departments. So my first question is about non-disciplined services staff, that is other grades in general. Now cronyism, this is uh, also a concern. And just now one, civil, uh, one labor union asked whether there will be any central guidelines. My question is this. Now we all understand uh, that uh, different civil servants' performance may differ, and uh, some, uh, for some of them, their physical condition may be on the decline, and there should be an approved mechanism. Otherwise, if everyone can work till 65, um, there may be problems. That's one view I heard. And between 60 and 65, some may not wish to stay till 65 as they reach 60. Uh, we don't or we can't accept the cronyism and yet we also need objective criteria in approving applications. For example, um, no abuse of um, sick leave and I don't know whether there is a scale for rating the criteria. And that is up to the head of grade to decide whether to approve the application or not. These are objective criteria. Let's see if you accept it. That is, in short, your name will not be considered. However, your performance before the retirement that is in relation to the number of sick leave days taken, uh, any disciplinary action, uh, all these will be considered instead of subjective elements. On the other hand, if there is no screening at all and everyone can automatically be retained, then will this will this cause um, some are not wishing to be retained to be retained and vice versa? Well, we'll consider that in the next stage. I think. The problem is uh, for the demand supply gap, some judgment may be necessary or decisions will have to be made. And a committee will be set up to oversee this for departments. They should be impartial and just. Next, Mr. Yipkin Yun. Madam Chair, I'd like to ask two related questions. The first one is for Mr. Cole from the Emblem Men's Union of FSD. Now, he said that his union is against it, and he said that without any improvement measures, they will not support it. And yet, you didn't mention what improvement measures you mean. 
for you to change your mind and support the proposal. So can you tell us something about that? Because what you said uh, reminds me of、um, the situation for teachers. In another public hearing, views have been heard that teachers, in fact, have reservations over the extension of their retirement age, and we are seeing more and more cases of early retirement of teachers because they really have a heavy workload. Secondly, there is great difficulty in recruiting new teachers. So I also agree that if we don't have new blood、uh, coming in, and if we just extend our retirement age, that will be a problem. So my question for secretary is that whether or not. Uh, it's about ambulance men or teachers. Will there be an across-the-board approach for all occupations, and will there be differential treatment for different、um, occupations? Maybe Mr. Cole can also、uh, respond. Well, in fact, I'm also employed under the new civil servants terms. I'm also under the CSPF system, not the pension scheme. It's not the case that I don't want to work beyond retirement. The problem is、um, there is not no help from the government to help alleviate our burden.、Uh, when I was coming. Here, I met actually met、uh, an ex-colleague who has become a security guard now. He has left the post for four to five years. In fact, he it it wasn't the case that he didn't wish to remain in the post, but we need to come up with ways to explain how many. Uh, hours of、uh, meal time we have, and what we ate, etc. I think for many of you here, you have time for meals, but not so much for us. And if we couldn't even have meals, how could we have the strength to rescue others, secretary? For new recruits. Um, that is our proposal for serving officers. I think it's up to individual departments and grades to decide. That is, if they need new blood and they don't have any recruitment difficulties, they may not need to implement the proposal I mentioned. So,、um, time is up, Mr. Kwa Wai Kang. Thank you, Madam Chair. I welcome all the civil service unions representatives here. I think the least controversial proposal is proposal number four, that is just to relax the control regime of post office employment for frontline staff, so that they can have more choices to work in the private sector. As、so、for the first three proposals. I think for the first one, basically,、um, they, you all agree that for new recruits, the retirement age can be set at 65. The only controversy is about disciplined services staff. There are views,、uh, uh, there are questions on why the retirement age can only be extended to 57, and it can be extended to 60 only if、um, the officer passes the suitability assessment test. And there should be clear guidelines to alleviate our colleagues' concerns. And frankly, proposal A has nothing to do with addressing the issue of、um, manpower shortage. For new recruits, they won't retire in 20 years' time, but our、uh, retirement search will、uh, surface in the coming 10 years. So the question is, how we can retain、um, the、uh, 
uh, colleagues who will be retiring in the coming 10 years. So about um, not adopting an across-the-board approach and uh, allowing colleagues the freedom to choose, um, all these suggestions seek to address the more short-term problems in the coming 10 years, and yet uh, there is no satisfactory response from the administration. I hope Secretary can tell me how the uh, problem in the coming 10 years can be addressed. As for proposal number 2 and 3, there are no comprehensive guidelines. One may say that only colleagues to the boss's liking can uh, have their retirement age extended. How can this be dealt with? And how can this be prevented? Secretary, first, to take your second question, as I said, we will uh, have a detailed set of guidelines, and I also emphasize that this decision will not be made by just one uh, officer. Same as promotion. There is an internal board in the department comprising different colleagues, and the Civil Service Commission will also need to consider any promotion um, recommendation. And that is the case for colleagues who uh, apply to extend the service in the future. And also in the coming 10 years, the number of retirees will continue to increase to 7,000. And departments and grades, therefore, should start to consider our um, suggestions to deal with the issue. If, of course, if in the past years they have been recruiting a new staff, and there, if there is no succession problem, then there is no problem. But there are a few grades or professional grades that may have manpower shortage, and some of the retirees uh, should be invited to stay on, and they should start addressing the issue now. As mentioned. Just now, if we take an across-the-board approach, then um, the uh, may not maybe not all grades uh, require so much manpower, and we need some flexibility as a result. Vice Chairman Sipun, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, deputations, for coming to express your views. I heard that um, the concerns are mostly on two points, especially for those recruited uh, after. The year 2000. Um, the question is about the lack of choice. Now, Secretary uh, made the long answer. In fact, uh, according to the consultation document, uh, the consultation will end on the 2nd of August, and then afterwards you need to conduct some research and uh, just now, as the deputation asked, I'm concerned about the implementation timetable. Will there be a more specific timetable to tell us? Secretary, thank you, Vice Chairman, for your question. At present, we don't have a specific timetable. But we've heard your views. We will try to expedite it as soon as possible. That really depends on the views collected. We will analyze the views in detail and gauge the difficulties in implementing the proposals. For proposals that can be implemented more easily, they may be proceeded with earlier. For example, extending the retirement age of new recruits and also giving um, blanket exemptions, um, we will consider these. So you don't have a final timetable for preparation, no, not for the time being. Next, Mr. Lang Kuo Hong. Our chairman, uh, some say that uh, the we had that there will be a um, a culture of cronies, and this also happens in this room in Lechko. Now, Vice Chairman. 
is also a representative of a labor union and also Mr. Kwa Wai Kang from MTU. What about other members? You don't need to talk about civil servants. Just look at the, what happens here. We have political rewards. They can go out for meals and they just come back to cast their votes. Chairman, I think Ms. So Wong Kwok. Uh, Mr. Lang Kuo Hong's remarks are very offensive. Well, I have been a electrical, a directly elected electrical member for two terms. Uh, why does he say that? I will explain to you. You have to wait till me ask you to speak. You can speak now. Uh, for functional constituency members, there are about 14 or 16 um, organizations that they are representing and they uh, were elected and contested. So isn't that cronyism? Well, only trade unions and directly elected legislators are concerned about um, the working force, about the workers. and. I will speak very frankly and actually for this government now is exhausting all means to cut the uh, pay for staff because this is what the consortia want. So in the civil service now there are civil servants under different systems. Some are on old pensionable terms, some are um, on new pensionable terms, some are on contract terms, etc. And the disciplined services want to retire later, although they have a job with high pressure. Why is that? If they retire, they rather play with the grandchildren. They rather do Tai Chi. So why do they still want to work? It's because there was a cut in civil service pay. In the year 2000, in July, I joined the civil service uh, demonstrations and 70,000 or 40,000 people took to the streets because of the civil service pay cut. So can you resume the old pension system? Can you do away with contract staff? Secretary, can you do that? I will answer Mr. Lang's questions. First of all, about um, civil servants on contract terms. Uh, we have talked to different departments. If um, those are long-term tasks, um, those positions should be changed to civil service positions. And is the world trend that um, no pension will be offered to civil servants because the, gov um, the governments cannot afford any more. And I think um, civil service pays and uh, benefits are better than those in the private market. We have also talked to different heads of grades and head of departments, and if they find difficulties in recruiting new staff, of course, uh, we will try to come up with new methods. So why are you lowering the standard to um, MPF? Because a provident fund is better than MPF. They say that he says that's, that the civil servants are enjoying provident funds, so it's already better. But for the new recruits, uh, they um, they have um, MPF, not provident fund. Mr. Lam Chi Chang, for extending the service of civil servants, it's a bit different from extending the retirement age of civil servants. But if we want to align uh, retirement age in all grades, there may be some problems. Yet this has to be handled properly. Otherwise, this will deal a blow at the morale of the civil servants. I've heard some points from the deputations, and they are not happy with some areas of the consultation paper. The secretary said just now why they cannot adopt a 
an across-the-board approach for the retirement age of civil servants. I am still not too convinced. And when we look at the um, work of civil servants right now, yes, their workload is heavier and they have to be more accountable. However, there is manpower shortage in many departments. The government says, insists that manpower cannot be increased. So now it's forced to extend um, the working life, but this is not applicable to all the grades. So this will create um, contradictions among different departments, and there will be conflicts. You are saying that you will issue guidelines. So how can these guidelines be viewed as fair by all? Well, I said just now that even though we have this proposal, so it doesn't mean that we will not add any manpower, as you may know. Um, in the past year, we have added 1.5% um, um, of manpower. In the long run, we will continue to increase manpower. However, some uh, departments are still facing problems. Even though they are allowed to recruit new officers, um, these officers may lack experience, and also some other departments may face recruitment problems. So um, they want their existing officers to work for a longer period. So that's why we need flexibility because uh, different departments face different problems. Well, we are extending the um, service of civil servants. It does not mean that we will not be recruiting new civil servants. Mr. Tankapu, just now some trade unions have talked about this. Well, for the model scale one staff, it seems that they are excluded from this new plan of extending the service of civil servants. Who can the secretary tell us? Is this true that as for um, junior staff, their service will not be extended? Well, we I told you just now that this is a proposal about a direction. That is about extending the service of civil servants. So we have not differentiated um senior rank officers and junior rank officers um, except the post-retirement service contract scheme, which will not cover directorate staff. However, many junior rank um, officers are not convinced. At the end of the day, who will be able to stay? We are not talking about cronyism, but now you are saying that you have no recruitment problem. You uh, want to find a new janitor, and there are ten thousand applications. So of course you will not want to retain them. So are you what's your position if you are the head of? 170,000 civil servants, shouldn't you pay more attention to their own will instead of just looking at the Treasury? As for our staff's retirement arrangements, no matter whether they are on pension or on provident fund, we think the present arrangement is reasonable. But we understand that for some um, colleagues, they want to work after their retirement. So that's why we uh, want to have this new uh, initiative. That is, uh, some departments can re-employ their retiring officers. We well, just mentioned the post-retirement service contract scheme. So the Retired or um, civil servants can work on contract terms, 
and um, undertake ad hoc duties. I want to see consistency. No matter what department it is, what grade it is, if um, an officer wants to stay on after retirement, you should consider his application. Well, uh, many members have asked questions, and we are overrunning a bit. But um, civil servants are very concerned about this, so I will give some more time to the deputations. I will allow three representatives to speak. I'm sorry because uh, we have time constraints. But it's very difficult to choose. So many hands have been raised. Clark, you make the decision. Clark, choose those who have not asked questions before. First, Mr. Tang Tech Ho, three minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, we speak on behalf of our frontline and junior rank um, colleagues. Well, um, Hong Kong's population is aging, and there will be a huge wave of retirement. So we need a fair approach when it comes to retirement. So if um, senior and uh, middle management can enjoy a certain benefit. We want to enjoy the benefits as well. This is only fair. And you cannot do the screening. Uh, because we have been performing well and we work until retirement age. So if at the age of 60 we can still maintain that performance, why do you want to screen us out? And if you exclude the frontline and junior rank staff from this new scheme, then how can you explain to us why do you reject us? We have been serving Hong Kong people for so many years. Can the secretary tell us why? I don't know what your final decision will be, but now you are excluding us from this scheme. This is what we think. I think I've explained just now. At the present stage, this is our direction. But um, of course, we will have to talk to different departments, and the departments um, may have their own plans of um, extending the service of their staff. So we will talk to the departments individually. Next, Mr. Chen Chou Kuang. I'm sorry, the speaker is off mic. Please speak into the microphone. Just now, the secretary. Well, I like, I like to see clarification. Just now, um, the secretary says that by extending the service of civil servants, there will be a, a promotion blockage. Well, actually, this is not a huge problem. It's mainly about senior staff. For example, uh, for the police, um, we have thirty thousand officers and. Only 1,000 officers will be promoted each year. So if it's frozen for five years, only 5,000 people will be affected. Well, we do not mind if the senior officers retire early so that the positions can be vacated. Uh, um, I have conducted a study. 70% of our staff want to retire at the age of 60. So you are there. Uh, point number two, I think uh, many members here don't understand, and I stand to be corrected. In fact, under the existing civil service regulations, as long as we set the retirement age at the at 60, there is a mechanism for reemployment. There is also a mechanism for early retirement. That is, under the old scheme, 
under the old pension scheme for the police force, the retirement age is 45. And then at the age of 40 or 45, they can apply for early retirement and then for further re-employment. As for the new pension scheme, they can only choose to retire at 55. So we have this mechanism. The question is to set the retirement age at 60 or 65. And in fact, if, if we um, use re-employment policy, we can uh, address the issue. So please understand that with, actually within the civil service, we have this um, regulation and we have this um, mechanism. There is no need to have something new. S Secretary, I don't want to comment on individual grades or department, but uh, indeed the, uh, it affects promotional prospects and turnover of such a large organization is also important. Not every department or grade is the same. But in terms of drafting guidelines or codes, we need to be stringent. We cannot delegate the task to indi individual departments only. Um, I don't want to explain here. Let to uh, say to say that there is reemployment mechanism for staff under the old and new pension scheme. Uh, however, this is subject to approval by the head of grade or department and also endorsement by the Civil Service Bureau. Next, Mr. Zhang Xiuwen, Chairman. No, I, have, I need to respond to the Secretary's comments. Um, adopting a, an across-the-board approach to allow civil servants to work beyond retirement. Now, for senior civil servants that are experienced as um, the managerial level, um, there is no barrier in terms of communication. Um, now, in fact, you allow them to uh, leave the post and join the private uh, market. Um, then there is a loss to civil servants. In fact, our establishment is very often short of staff, and uh, our people's lives and properties are at stake. Uh, let me just quote one example. We very often see collapse of trees, and people's safety are affected. If you retain more frontline staff, uh, we can get more help. Uh, safe, same as lifeguards. Uh, these frontline posts are sometimes taken up by security guards, and some of them can't even swim. How can you allow them to replace lifeguards? Why can't you take an across board approach and allow experienced se um, senior staff to stay on? And uh, the mechanism was set in the 1980s. I uh, think it has not catch up with the times. Now, civil servants here are asking for an extension of the uh, their service because they are worried that they may have to live below the po uh, poverty line. Let's say we have 300,000 elderly people in society. Um, if you uh, have only 2,000 or 300, uh, $3,000 to spend per month for living expenses, you can be regarded as um, living in poverty. So please consider carefully retaining the staff so as to help the government and help the public. Any response from the from secretary? Yes, briefly. If we don't have additional manpower, then just by retaining those posts, um, the, we cannot address the issue. So we need more on the one hand, and also for in terms of uh, knowledge transfer, in the past, it wasn't a reason, uh, um, um, a justification for extending service, but now it is. And I think the retirement system should also catch up with the times. Thank you, Secretary, for answering so many questions, and thank you for uh, attending our meetings, deputations, and individuals. The deadline is the 2nd of August. If you haven't uh, um, made your your submission 
Please do so as soon as possible. We will follow up on the gov the uh, government's implementation timetable. Ms. Lau? So, uh, when will you report back to us? I think we'll need to wait for the next electrical session. We'll come back and report to us. So, uh, to you, so far we don't have a timetable. So, um, not even um, which month, you can't tell us. Ms. Claudia Mo? Uh, I've raised my hand uh, as I want to discuss the next item about corruption. Um, yes, but uh, we've actually we're running out of time. If it's a is repetitive, no need to say it. Sorry, speak is not coming through. Whether there is support for extending the retirement age, I don't know whether there is anything you can do to help us about meal breaks. I note your concern. The Security Bureau is following up on the issue. So the Secretary has heard you loud and clear. The problem has been discussed here, and we can uh, separate this uh, item for later um, consideration. All right, thank you so much for this item. We have several members uh, who have raised their hands. Next item is and integrity enhancement initiatives for civil servants. Over to you, Secretary. You have a paper. Um, yes, civil servants are the core backbone of the government. They need to abide by a set of core values, including um, property and uh, honest, um, honesty. And this is uh, important in gaining public trust in the government. So we have all along been upholding a high standards of integrity and property in the civil service. And the ICAC has been working closely with bureaus and departments. And there is a three-pronged strategy, prevention, education, and uh, education and training, and thirdly, sanction to uphold um, and enhance civil servants' integrity. The paper sets out the latest situation to enhance integrity for civil servants. For example, um, in the last year, we published the draft guidelines uh, on um, to provide guidance to individual civil servants and also to enhance their internal guidelines and codes. On the other hand, we also have an um, MIPO booklet published, and we also had uh, seminars for civil servants to enhance their understanding on corruption prevention practices. And we also have um, ethics officers and assistant ethics officers, and we hold workshops with them, and also we introduced a special citation award under the Civil Service Outstanding Service Award Scheme in 2013. And there are two team awards, General Public Service and Regulatory Enforcement Service. We want to enhance integrity um, standards and integrity management for departments and bureaus. Now, as for statistics, the Civil Service uh, has had high standards of integrity and property. In terms of number of cases, the situation is uh, generally stable and under control. We'll continue to work with different enforcement agencies to enhance integrity and property of civil servants and uh, to uphold an honest and clean civil service. Four members have raised their hands, Ms. Claudia Mo, Sin Jung Kai, Wong Kwok Heng, and Emily Lau. Five minutes each. Ms. Claudia Mo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Now, you always talk about uh, property, integrity, uh, ethical leadership program, um, uh, integrity, education, so on and so forth. It's easy to uh, say it, but it's difficult to implement it. What we're concerned is uh, that the uh, senior Government officials don't lead by example. From um, Donald Chung to the former ICAC Commissioner Timothy Tong, we saw a spate of incidents. 
Although in 2013, 15 civil servants were prosecuted for corruption-related offences, resulting in 11 uh, convictions, and it represented only 0.01% of all civil servants within the administration. However, several se secretary, please bear in mind that we're not talking about the quantity, but the quality or the substance of the cases. Um, the ICAC's credibility, the image, was destroyed just by Mr. Timothy Tong's incident, and also the public's confidence in the whole uh, government structure is at stake. Of course, this, uh, these two cases that I cite example um, uh, are about the previous administration. For this administration, there is no, no problem. You may say so, but this administration and CY Leung has the lowest popularity since 1997. Are you concerned whether something would go wrong here in particular? According to your figures, for cases referred to the ICAC in 2012, there were 126 cases. And last year, it was dropped to just one third, just 39 cases. It's really pointless to lodge complaints because the uh, CY Leung administration resorts to cronyism, to giving political rewards. And as a result, we see the um, small number of complaints. Secretary, now for individual cases, um, some of them are still under investigation, so I'm not in a position to comment here. But may I talk about some um, cases of uh, the public's concerns? Uh, of course, I understand the concerns, and that is exactly why. Throughout the ranks, we need to enhance prevention, education, and training. Enforcement is also important. We can not have a talk shop and uh, not do anything. This is the work of the ICAC. Uh, it is responsible for enforcing the law, and it has done so seriously. As for situations like the government's credibility, etc., it won't affect the civil service work. The civil servants are, are required to be politically neutral, and they must execute uh, in the most objective and responsible manner, and also to give advice to principal officials in an objective manner. I'm sorry, your time is up. I said five. You said five minutes, right? Sorry, my mistake. You haven't answered my question. The administration has such a low popularity. You say that for civil servants, it's not relevant. However, but are you really concerned? That when the top official, when CY Leung, resorts to cronyism and favoritism, the number of complaints lodged with the ICAC will just drop, uh, perhaps none at all. Are you worried? Uh, no, I'm not. Because the ICAC works independently, and for civil service, First of all, one of our core values is integrity and property. Any colleague coming across such cases is responsible for lodging complaints, and the ICAC on receiving complaints will duly fulfill their duties. Mrs. In Chung Kai, I think what's happening is depressing. The number of cases uh, of corruption, uh, or the number of ca corruption-related cases, 
related to ICE um, civil servants um, has been on the decline. In 2009, it was uh, 1,061 cases. In 2013, uh, there was there were just 809 cases. Between 2010 to 2012, the figure was uh, the figures were mostly stable around 1,000, and then in 2013, there were just 809 cases. So representing a drop, that may be because corruption has been put under control. But on the other hand, this might be due to the loss of confidence um, in the system. I understand the ICAC will conduct a survey annually on people's confidence in the system. But do you have any in-depth research? It's a drop of 20%, uh, an apparent drop. It could be something good or it could be something bad. But it may also reflect that the community has less confidence in reporting corruptions. So will you conduct a study into this? Why is there such a drop? Well, the ICAC conducts a benchmark survey each year. However, can you also look into the reason behind the drop? Thank you, Mr. Sin, for your question. Well, as a wishful thinking, we I really hope that this figure reflects the drop in corruption cases. But we are just looking at the figure of one year, so I don't think it can really reflect the situation. I think we should monitor the tendency for a longer time. As for the ICAC, I understand that they have stepped up uh, the publicity, um, asking people to report corrupt cases to them, corruption cases to them. And if so at the moment, we think that we should monitor the situation further. And we dare not say that the um, situation has improved a lot by just looking at one year's figure. Yes, you say that you will have to monitor for a few more years. However, would you consider carrying out a study? Of course, the ICAC does its own survey, but will you conduct your own study trying to find out the reason for the decline in numbers? If you wait for a few years, it may be too late. Maybe you can form a focus group. Yes, we will consider all possibilities. But for a formal um, study, I don't think we need to do it now. I'm disappointed in your reply. I think this is an alarm. You see, 1,061, 1,057, 1,170, 1,192. So the figures have been stable, around 1,000 cases a year. But in 2013, it's dropped to 8,809. And if you compare it with the peak, that's a drop of 30%. And if you compare this figure with the previous few years, that's been a drop of 20%. This is not a statistical error. And Secretary, if at this stage you do not think to, you need to do anything, I am really disappointed. I think you should carry out studies. You should try to find out the reasons why. Otherwise, you have been um, telling us about your integrity programs, your ethics programs, etc. I think it's a waste of resources. At least you should consult the staff side. Yeah, we will we'll, uh, look into the situation, but I don't think we need a formal questionnaire uh, survey. We want to understand the situation more as well. But as I said just now, one year may not reflect the true situation. But of course, we want to know more, and um, let us uh, look into this. Mr. Wong Kwa-heng. Well, the courts 
has already handed down its ruling on uh, Mr. Mac Chai Kwong and Mr. Zhang Kingman. I'm not talking about the case because the case has ended already. Mr. Wang Wenping, the former Secretary for Civil Service, also commented publicly. He said that for this kind of practice, it was prevalent many years ago. And as far as he understood, it's not a violation of the law. So at that time, um, there may might be civil servants doing that, and now they are still in the civil service. Well, they may feel a huge psychological pressure because they do not know when people will report on them. Mr. Wang Wingping said in those years the practice was different. So I would like to ask the Secretary with regard to this, will the government clarify its position? Would you clearly tell people that what would be considered an offense so that the people who were involved in such acts many years ago would not have to live in fear nowadays? So would you clarify? the situation to these people. I would like to thank Mr. Wong for his question. There are two points. First of all, about the case you uh, mentioned just now, it's still sub judice, so I'm not going to comment on it. And second, Mr. Wong asked about the old practice. That's actually the application for housing allowance, and that's an old system. It's, um, ended many, it ended many years ago. Now, if two civil servants, A and B, and A rents B's flats and B rents A's flats. Basically, there's no problem. It's not forbidden. But the problem is if A rents B's flats and actually the flat belongs to A, then it's a violation of the rules at that time because the housing allowance was given to um, that officer for renting a flat, not for buying a flat. So this is very clear, and there's no need to remind our colleagues of this, because this is very clear. So renting a colleague's flat is not a violation of the law. And if our colleagues have done this, this would not uh, become a pressure, because this is a very clear policy. I would like to thank you for your reply, and I hope that this reply can be put down in record by the clerk. Now you have given us an explanation. I don't know how many civil servants have this kind of queries. Now the secretary has explained, so I hope that um, it has clarified. The situation and the civil servants would understand more about this uh, arrangement. Thank you. Assembly Lao. The topic we are discussing today is the integrity and Integrity Enhancement Initiatives for Civil Servants. For integrity and probity, of course, they are the work of the ICAC and the police. And property, when it comes to property, well, civil servants are supposed to be politically neutral. We expect the civil service to be a team of 
objective and neutral professionals. Under the present political atmosphere, can civil servants still maintain their political um, neutral neutrality, or they would be lopsided towards the more powerful side? I've heard that some civil servants are really afraid of suggesting policies that may not be welcomed by the public. And I think actually the CS should be looking at the property of civil servants. Some of them are really worried. Can they still maintain property? Can they maintain their political neutrality? Can they operate independently and professionally? First of all, Uh, when it comes to facing electrical or the public, yes, of course, there are a lot of difficulties as civil servants we have been trying our best to cooperate with the electrical. We know that um, the electrical serves as a check and balance for the government. And we also understand that the public um, can monitor civil servants. We understand that, yes, it's difficult, but it's our duty. Under the present system, the accountable officers uh, would have to make decisions, and civil servants are required to assist the accountable officials to implement the policies. And at the end of the day, the decisions are made by the accountable officials, and they have to shoulder the responsibility. So um, the civil servants know very well about this. As the secretary had complaints or comments, about this, that as nowadays um, it's very difficult for senior government officials to be politically independent or neutral. I haven't heard about this. That is, um, the senior government officials are required to um, show that they have a certain political inclination. They have to maintain their neutrality, in fact. When a decision is made and a policy is to be implemented, yes, we understand there are a lot of difficulties now. I'm not saying that they have to support a certain um, superior. I'm talking about different political parties. I don't think now they, um, the senior government officials are that politically neutral and independent. But when it comes to political parties or groups, of course, there is a lot of lobbying going on, but this is mainly um, the job of accountable officials. And sometimes civil servants are just to help. For example, um, they may need uh, support from a certain um, organization or sector, the civil servants can help the accountable official. But it's still the mainly the task of the accountable official. Well, there are a lot of civil servants who are working in the communities and in the communities, the uh, certain political parties are very powerful. So how can the civil servants maintain their political neutrality? Well, for our colleagues who work in the districts, they have to liaise with uh, political parties at a district level. 
So that basically their objective is to prom um, implement government or promote government initiatives, and they need to work with the relevant uh, units and organizations. Next, Mr. Tenkapiu. Thank you, Chairman. Now, this topic is about enhancement of integrity. I don't know what's the relevance with that uh, stance. Um, it's all about actual benefits and gains. Now, this year the figure is quite good. The num total number of complaints, we've seen a drop. The number of complaints that um, have been followed up on, it has dropped. And the number of play cases referred to the bureaus and departments for disciplinary action, again, the number has dropped. Of course, these figures, despite being very good, uh, may cause alarm, and we're awaiting figures in 2014 for further information. Secondly, I have a question. Among these cases, is there anything related to decisions made by the civil servants to be employed um, to do post service work? Now, the Civil Aviation Department recently um, in the media, it was reported that the civil servant making the decision was eventually employed by the same company as some as consultant. And about the guidelines, I see a lot of problems. How many cases received involved delayed benefits? And what has the government done in assuring public's confidence? Two points. First, on the cases mentioned by Mr. Tang. Uh, in fact, we have Are we, or we are preparing a written reply. We are still seeking information from the Civil Aviation Department. The colleague in question did not take part in the actual work. But anyway, I can explain to you in greater detail. As for the figures, I don't know if everyone has uh, the figures. Maybe. Starting from 2014, you can have an in a separate entry uh, as a representative of the labor sector i'm very clear about it for a civil servant um who is pensionable he may be very cautious because he may need to rely on the pension payment after retirement so he will uphold integrity and poverty however for those on mpf or cspf schemes there will be a one-off payment, and what happens afterwards? Uh, we have differential treatment. How can you deal with them? Let me take the second question first. As mentioned in the previous item, there might be a wrong perception that civil servants on retirement can only get the government's contribution at the age of 60. And ex as explained just now, no matter and what age the colleague retires, he can get the government's contribution first, and it's uh, up to 25 percent. Um, Secretary, I was talking about moral risks. Don't take me like a kindergarten pupil. Yes, well, I would just like to explain that in terms of financial security. They do have some security on retirement. As for whether this is the same as the pension payment, maybe not. But in fact, nowadays we rarely see countries using the pension system. Well, the MPF or the CSPF, in the government's view, is sufficient in providing for all civil servants. and on education and other areas. Again, this is important. If the case is corruption-related, then there is a consequence. 
So I don't think because more colleagues are on P MPF, uh, there'll be more corruption cases. Oh, you you haven't answered my question. Will there be a separate entry? You don't have one now, but in the coming year, 2014-15, uh, on delayed benefits, will there be a separate entry? This, the figures actually come from the ICAC. We need to ask them, Mr. Long Home. Integrity. That means uh, Im impartiality. Property. I think Sage Tong was smart. He turned many corrupt gov civil servants into principal accountable officials, accountability officials. That is why, in terms of the number of complaints against civil servants, we have seen a drop. Just like Mr. Raphael, Raphael Hoy, he is actually involved in the biggest case of um, corruption within the civil service, and it, the trial is still ongoing. He actually turned um, the highest echelon of civil servants into PA officials. Just like Donald Zhang, before the conversion, he was the worst corrupt civil servant when he was uh, chief sec secretary and Donald Chung took the lead and Siwa Lung just followed. So give me an objective answer, Secretary. Do you think a head of state should have a BVI incorporated company? Just tell me your neutral comment. Do you think it is appropriate? I don't think it's appropriate even at your rank. You're much lower than CY Lang. Do you have a BVI company? Do you have a company incorporated in the British Virgin Islands? Now, um, M. Chair, let me answer your question. Accountable officials are also bound by. Well, just answer my question. You are tasked to do this, right? At your post, at your rank, as a bureau director or as permanent secretary or subordinate, should they have um, a BVI company without anyone knowing about it? I don't think this is about the civil service. No, it's a very simple question. Let's say your subordinate permanent secretary, what if he or she has a BVI company? Would you remind him or her that this is not all right? I think declaration will suffice for directorate officers that are required to make declarations. So let's say if they re declare they have a BVI company, what would happen? My colleagues have made declarations. Uh, maybe because it may have a conflict of interest with their line of work. But what about BVI company? It's not detectable. Oh, this this is just a hypothetical question. I think it all boils down to trust, Mr. Leung. I think you won't uh, recommend your permanent secretary to do so, but you can't recommend the chief sec uh, executive not to do so. Secondly, um, that is without fear or favor uh, on enhancing integrity. I think it's a waste of breath. Civil servants could uphold integrity because the government could be replaced. If you can only have one government and uh, it's never subject to any change, and civil servants can only serve their masters, it cannot do. In a Western country, the system is based on the changing of um, uh, cabinets 
uh, etc. So do you agree? Let's say if a civil civil servant is really uh, um, in fear of um, a boss, then uh, it will, he will have a difficult time serving for thirty years. Do you think that civil servants can really be impartial? Let's say if it's a, it is a country and you rule for forty years, would anyone dare to uh, speak up against you? That's even in the case of uh, U.S. If the government remains in the hands of a few, I mean, uh, only those can control the government. Then what is the meaning? I think uh, any response. Civil servants are required to be politically neutral. Theoretically, right? This is the opinion. Chairman, now the Chief Secretary, uh, Mr. Raphael Hoy, Mr. Timothy Tong, and Mr. Donald Zhang, the former CE, were mentioned just now, and we are concerned whether there is any government business collusion or any delayed um, benefits. Uh, these happened in the top echelon of government. It's outside the civil service, and yet we're concerned whether there is a problem with our system. So whilst the paper emphasizes that only a very small percentage of civil service is problematic. In the minds of the public, they perceive it otherwise. They see uh, huge problems arising and they have to do with the system. So I think prevention, as mentioned in your paper, is very important. And we offer high salaries to civil servants so that they can exercise self discipline because if they are corrupt, they tend to lose a lot. If the cost is too high, they tend not to resort to corruption. But in fact, the system is changing. We have this new terms for civil servants, they don't have pension. The MPF has changed to CSPF. The salaries are not as attractive as before. And again, will there be any systemic problems? Even if we have education and training, can we stop our next generation civil servants? Um, or can we ensure our next generation civil servants to be of integrity and property has the administration considered that is it worried that um, even offering high salaries to prevent corruption in the f in future um, it will just cease to be effective secretary I understand your concerns but um, we also have a number of points to make first of all the CSPF offered by the government is already much better than the private sector. So we think it will remain attractive. And for retirees on the retirement, I mean, the government contribution may be withheld. And for convicted civil servants. There is a way for the government to um, get back the properties. Uh, as for high salaries, well, it must be re still be reasonable. We believe we can attract committed individuals to join the government and to offer them with stable employment and reasonable salaries. The other point is whether they will 
break the law and face prosecution. This is important. So our pamphlet also emphasizes enforcement. Of course, if the um, salaries are really low, this would affect an individual's decision. Several years ago, we also had this uh, controversy over the vetting uh, or integrity checking on civil senior civil servants. Um, for the existing arrangement, we believe it can strike a balance between um, the post service work of civil servants and the public's concern uh, of possible delayed benefits. And we think we are able to fulfill the objective. So we can address the issue of delayed benefits. I think we have um, finished asking questions. Um, uh, any other business? Vice Chairman, I would like to ask a question about the annex. There are 39 cases um, have been referred by ICAC to bureaus and apartments. Can you let us know more how about um, the ranks and grades concerned? Yes, I will give the information to you later. Um, Ms. Emily Lau has left, but she mentioned um, the pace ride to civil servants. So uh, when do you think that can be passed, and um, what kind of um, impact will be brought to the civil service and the uh, public bodies? Well, of course, I want this to be done as soon as possible. After the summer break, the uh, proposal would be submitted to the Finance Committee as soon as possible. And now we are still uh, following the order. As for civil servants, they understand, they know that there will be back pay um, and it will be traced back to the First of April. As for subvented uh, bodies, we will also do that. That is, there will also be back pay. As to whether the individual um, organizations would do that, um, that would hinge on their own policies. Now, some are uh, concerned about social welfare organizations, but the SWD has uh, talked to them and the um, NG, relevant NGOs and social welfare organizations have already agreed that um, the amount of money will be uh, used as a pays for their staff. Well, for some junior rank officers or for officers who are on contract terms, would they not get the back pay? Um, no, they will also get a back pay, and that will start um, counting on the 1st of April. As for contract staff, they are outside this system. So in the contract, if um, they state that um, there will be a pay increase on the 1st of September, they can do that in September, uh, but the figure of or the rate of rise cannot exceed um, the general rate of rise. Well, we will remind the departments uh, for their contract staff if they need to adjust the contract staff's pay, they can do so. Mr. Yip Kin Yun. I would like to follow up on this because some teachers are so very concerned about the pay adjustments. And I explained to them um, there is a line in the Finance Committee, and this proposal was placed uh, behind some controversial issues. So that's why we um, could not do, we could not approve it before the summer break. But after the summer break, will the government change the order in the queue so that um, these proposals can be placed in front of the more controversial issues and they can be approved as soon as possible? So have 
uh, has the government been talking about this? Can you let us know, or will you willing to, or will you be willing to fight for this? I think you've heard the FS explanation. All issues are important, so we cannot put one proposal in front of the other. We understand that there are still the problems about the three landfills and one incinerator. They are also very important for Hong Kong people. So at the moment, the government still wants to follow the existing order. We hope members can deal with the backlog as soon as possible. But if we, if you insist on uh, putting the controversial issues at the top, then it would delay the discussions of other items. Well, it's okay for teachers to wait for a few months for um, their pay rise, but if you want them to wait till next year, I think. Um, there will be an outcry that includes both civil servants and teachers. You cannot drag your feet forever. The reality is if you swap the items, then in October we can already approve this. So can your bureau talk to the administration, please a court priority to these items. Yes, I understand that is your view, but from our perspective, we want the Finance Committee to approve all the items as, as soon as possible, including the controversial items. Well, I hope that during the summer break, you can, can really think about it. Okay, we have finished discussing all the items. Um, today or even uh, for this term, so I'll see you after the summer break.